Greetings Spencer. So this is the next video on our forearm protectors. So I'm not a huge fan of forearm protectors. I've had some trouble uh, finding ones that work for me. Forearm protectors like these are often 400 to 500 grams and paired with another 500 gram glove, you know, that's a thousand grams. That's close to a weight of a long sword. Uh, and once you have that on either arm, you know, it's like you're holding three long swords by the time you're actually holding your own sword. So I've always been a fan of trying to get stuff as light as possible. So that way it's, it's closer to me being unarmored and more realistic movement and my arms aren't super thick. So when Purple Heart Armory launched uh, their light forearm guards, I was really excited. I was one of the first orders. And this is what they look like. So they're just the outer shell of a forearm glove, which in my opinion, that's all you need. So I really like um, how it feels, how much it covers. I can hold my arm out in front of me and it just feels like I'm holding my arm. There's nothing dragging me down. My arm's also a lot thinner than wearing other forearm protectors and it's just a lot nicer experience having something that feels super lightweight that I can just move effortlessly. Now one of the downsides with these is because I use an AP light, it's such a thin material that oftentimes it pushes past my actual sleeve and is on my wrist. So if you wear a large jacket, that's less likely an issue, but it's something that is a discomfort having the hard shell directly on my wrist and was something that was annoying. With standard jackets, I find that's not really an issue because the sleeve is thick enough that it always stays and there's always sleeve past the forearm protector. The elbow guards are also good. They're just like Spess ones, they're just the outer shell. They would stay on their own without the forearm protector. They'd be perfectly usable as their own product. So the one major downside with the Purple Heart Armory one is it's quite a serious issue. Um, you can see how it's all taped up here. That's because it's at, we've threaded it back together. It was cracked on the shell. This is the shell on one of the other ones where it's taped that is also cracked and it's cracked again. So it essentially did not survive sparring. The forearm protector for that one also didn't survive sparring. It split completely in half. Now again, we live in a colder environment, but still the other, we have many other plastic plates that are not cracking. So this is something that they have to fix. I did let them know that ours did crack. Uh, if you decide to buy them, I definitely recommend asking, have you modified it since your first batch? So there are some gaps uh, where you bend your arm. Uh, I've taken a cross guard into there that did hurt a, a bit, but in general, cuts to the top will hit the plate and it's very unlikely that you'll get a disabling hit on the sleeve. This does protect enough that I'm never worried using this. Now there is also a equivalent product and competing product. It's the Superior Fencing model. So this one's nice because you can actually buy it in Canada from Johannes Heidner. So after my Purple Art Armory one had broke a bunch, I saw that these were actually just brought into Canada, put in an order for them and gotten to use them. They're actually bendier. The plastic bends and so I have not had any issue with it breaking because it isn't uh, just brittle. They're almost identical. It does feel like this is a little bit longer than the Purple Art Armory. Uh, just overall it feels like it generally reaches my wrist more often than the Purple Art one did. Uh, and all the same pros and cons apply. Um, again, it's very hard to get a cut that will hit just padding and generally it's going to cover you it's so lightweight that it just feels like it's my own body and not some big heavy element also on my arms. Now in case you are seeing the similarities between this and the Spess Pro plates, the problem with the Spess Pro plates is they actually only go halfway. And if for many types of jackets that's good enough, um, you can tough it out for cuts to the top. However, for an AP light and light jackets, you really need something that covers the top. Cuts coming down uh, will definitely hurt drastically and you need something that goes over the top 
and isn't just the bottom half. Now, because of that, because I use an AP light, that wrist issue was still an annoyance, so one-handed uh, swords, I'll generally use, you know, a red dragon and one of these, but for longsword, I did end up uh, purchasing a extended cuff sparring glove, which I really like. I'm glad I got it. It's something like this is a quarter of the weight uh, to a spes glove and forearm protector combo. Um, so your arm is so much lighter and you protect all the way down the forearm. Again, there's a section here, but that's because you have to be able to bend your arm and so that can never be fully protected easily. So for longsword, I do like having it built in and just light foam. So those are light foam protectors. I'm always looking uh, at different models that come out, like the HF Armory model in Ukraine. Thok might have some new stuff coming out and they're always coming up with new things. I'm not really happy with the jacket to forearm uh, continuity at the moment within HEMA. It's been getting better, but I think it still has a long way to go before um, it feels like they're thinking of the other part when they're making one of them. Because uh, right now it, yeah, it just, uh, it feels like it could be a lot better in the future. But anyway, thanks for watching. Keep studying, keep practicing. Yeah.